Hello, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to today's webinar. My name's Jackie and today we're going to be looking at some of the options for budgets within Sage 50 accounts. I'm joined by James, Michael and Tina today, so they're on hand for any questions. So if you do have any questions through today's session, please do make sure that you get them across to us as soon as possible. Don't feel you've got to wait to the end of the session and they'll be able to answer your questions for you today. Just before we begin, though, just a little bit of housekeeping. So what you will notice is your microphone will be um, placed on mute. So you'll see that it's in red with the cross through that. That should not impact your ability to hear us today. It just means you won't be able to speak to the team directly. If you do have a question, though, you can use the questions panel. You can open that by using the icon that looks like a speech bubble with the question mark in the middle and that will open up the questions panel there. So please do type in your questions there and get those across to the team. And finally, there is a handout for today's session. Um, the icon for that looks like a document with a folded corner. So please do download that through today's session. However, if you do forget or you can't locate it afterwards, it will be stored on Sage City shortly after today's session. The same with our frequently asked questions as well. So what we will do is compile all of the questions and pop those together within Sage City. In addition, there will also be a link sent out to you to access Sage City. From there, you can also access a recording of the session as well today. So if you are interested, Sage City is the place for any follow up information on today's webinar. OK, so as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at the budget feature today and we're going to be looking at the four different types of budgeting that are available depending on what um, version of the software that you're using. So first of all, we're going to just have a very brief introduction to budgeting. Then we're going to look at standard budgeting and then we're going to look at advanced nominal code, advanced departmental overview and advanced department in depth. We'll then show you some of the basic reports that you may wish to use when using each of these different um, types of budgeting there. A few messages there just about the handout it doesn't appear to be available. Bear with me, I will get those for you during the questions. That's my, um, my fault. I haven't uploaded that. Apologies for that. It will be on Sage City, however. We have already uploaded it to um, Sage City, but I will um, pop it into the handouts link for you once we come to the questions at the end. So apologies for all that, but we will get that uploaded for you. OK, so just a quick introduction, first of all, to budgeting. So why would you want to use budgeting? So it's a good way to monitor your costs and income and you can assess your pro profitability. So it might be that you're setting a budget because you want to um, push the business and set um, budgets in that way, or it may be that you are restricted by that budget. So it will work in both ways for you. And as I mentioned, there are four budgeting methods. So we've got standard budgeting, and that is available in all variants of the software. And then we've got advanced budgeting. And there's three different types of advanced budgeting going into different levels of detail, and they are only available in our professional version of the software. So if you do find that you don't have access to advanced budgeting, it may be that you're not quite on the professional version yet. Okay, so switching your budget method. So you might not be aware, you might already have a budget method switched on, or you might not have used it before, you want to know where you can switch it. So it can be done within settings and in company preferences. And I'm gonna demonstrate this in just a moment, but I do just need to um, give you a heads up first of all, if you change um, your budgeting method, what that can do is it can cause any budget information that's in there at present to be removed. So be very careful if you are going to switch budget method, be aware of what it's going to do with the data that's in there at present. So I'm just going to um, pause the screen for one moment. We're just going to pop into my standard data set and I'll show you where you can switch it. And I'll also show you an article which is quite helpful for when you um, are looking from switching from one, one version of budgeting to another. It gives you a bit of information as to what will happen there. OK, so that's me back into my live data. So to check what version of budgeting you're using at the moment, you can do this by going into settings, company preferences, pop in your password. And what you will also see there is a budgeting tab. Now, by default, all companies will be set up with the standard budgeting method. But within here, to change it to a different uh, budgeting type, 
if you've got the drop down with advanced that means you have got the feature there so i can change it to advanced and that opens up the secondary box for me so to select a different budgeting type i'm going to leave this on standard for the time being just wanted to show you where you can check that and where you can make the change but like i said there can be implications of your switching uh, budget scheme so I just want to show you this article first of all now this is available on our help center if you, if you search for switching budget method it will come up with this particular article which i'm not going to go through all of them for you but what it does do is it does show you what the impact will will have on your data depending on what you're switching from and what you're switching to so check out what you're using currently which one you're wanting to go to and it will tell you what will happen with any data that's held in there so that's just within the help center and popping in a search for switching bu budget methods okay so i'm just going to pop back to the powerpoint so we're going to go back and forward a little bit today just so we can give you all of the information that you need and um, we're just going to first of all have a quick look at standard budgeting okay so this is the most basic version of budgeting um, this is the one that is available in all variants of the software, so everyone should have access to this form of budgeting. And this form of budgeting is based on the nominal record only. So when you log into a nominal record, for example, 4000 in this example here, what you will see is a budgets column within the record there. And basically you can add your budgets into this budget column and that is where it is stored. Now, this does have benefits, although it may seem quite basic to those of you who are maybe using the more complicated systems. This does have benefits over the advanced system, as this is the only one where you can actually import budget figures into. OK, now it's a really key question that we do get asked a lot. Can I import budget figures? Unfortunately, the only one you can import budget figures into is when you're using standard budgeting. So I'm just going to very briefly show you that in the live data. Now, I have got four data sets for today, one on each scheme. So please do bear with me while I just make sure we get the right data set for you there. And that's us into our standard one. So as you can see here, I'm in my standard data set and I'm just going to pop into nominal codes. And <laughs> apologies for the bright colours, but um, if I just select one of my nominal codes, I'm going to find 4000 in there. And within 4000, what you'll see there is my budgets column. So what I can do is I can pop a budget in into each one if I want to. Or what I can also do is pop in a total at the bottom. So if I do want the same um, amount sort of spread across the year uniformly, so if I, for example, say 12,000, what that will then do is ask me if I want to spread it evenly across the year. So that's great if I do want to do it evenly. However, if I am in a business where there might be peaks and troughs, it might be seasonal, you might want to do it on an individual month by month basis, in which case it is a manual way of um, going through each one and typing them. But bear in mind, again, these can be imported if need be. So quite straightforward it would mean going through each nominal code if you're not importing and then entering manually into each nominal code at the beginning of your financial year or when you're starting to introduce the budgets so we're going to move on to the next one and the next one we're going to take a look at is one of our advanced ones i'm just going to put back onto the powerpoint there waiting for that to reload so i'm moving on to advanced budgeting now okay so these do tend to do it in a little bit a little bit more in depth and it is in a different window um, and we have three different types of this now the first one we're going to cover is advanced budgeting nominal code now this is very similar to our standard budgeting it allows us to enter a budget per nominal code no further detail on there however the reporting is slightly different because we're using advanced budgeting I'm going to come on to reporting towards the end there just to show you the, dif the difference between the reports so we can enter our budgets into the window which i will show you a demonstration in just one moment but the added bonus with this particular feature here is that we can also add things like a forecast for next year which we can copy over when we run our financial year end so again just to demonstrate this i'm just going to pop into our um, nominal code data 
It's finding the right one there out of all four. Okay, so as you can see at the top there, my company name is Budgets 2 Advanced Nominal Code. So to access any of the advanced budgeting settings, once that's switched on, we actually need to be within the departments module. So for standard, we went into nominal codes, but when we're on advanced, we're going to go into the departments module. Now in here, you can see we've got the option for budgets just here. And that launches the window, just like you saw a little bit earlier on um, in the PowerPoint there. Now, apologies again, we are on 2017 data, so don't, don't worry too much about that. So um, what we're looking at here is all of our nominal codes down the left-hand side are our nominal groupings. And um, what I can do from here is I can expand on sales and I can expand right down to nominal code level. And as you can see there, I've got sales type A. So I'm just gonna select that particular one. And what we can do here again, is we can enter a monthly budget. So again, if we're seasonal and we want to show the peaks and troughs, well, then we can enter them manually. But again, if I do have um, an, a value that I want to just spread the cost across the entire 12 months, then what I can do is enter it into here. And again, when I click somewhere else, it will ask me if I want to spread that across the 12 months. So that's really useful there. It's just immediately added all of them across the entire year and they can still be amended from here if need be. What that also does in this window here is it allows me to compare it to my actual figures. Now I can't alter the actual figures because the actual figures are coming through from transactions that have been posted into my data and what that also does then is it calculates the variance for that nominal code. At the bottom here, you can see that I can also add in my forecast. So if I wanted to do a stretch on, on this year, next year, so I'm going to double what I've um, done, then I can actually spread that across the, um, I can actually enter that there as well. So that is the most basic version of advanced um, budgeting. We're going to go a little bit deeper with the next one. And the next one we're going to be looking at is departmental overview. So I'm just going to close out of this one back to our PowerPoint. Wait for that to load there. And so this one is advanced budgeting departmental overview. So this does differ from the first two that I've just demonstrated there because we're not looking at nominal codes. This allows us just to apply a budget per department. So particularly useful if you're just going to be budgeting for particular areas across the business or different, um, say, locations, if you've got different branches, it allows us just to apply an entire budget across the whole department. Now, as you can see there, the window's very similar to the one that you would have seen earlier for um, advanced nominal code. So we're just going to pop in there just to show you the differences there. And that is us into our third data set. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky on this one because we can't show all, all of them on the same data set. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, to get into the advanced um, budgeting section, we need to be in departments. So again, I'm going to go back into budgets. And here you can see, rather than selecting a nominal code at the top, there's no um, expansion on sales or purchases. It's only letting me choose the department. So here I can set my department, um, my department is Newcastle, and I can basically set my sales budget for Newcastle as a total. I'll spread it across the year again if I need to. I'll pop some values into here. And again, if I click elsewhere, it will ask me if I want to spread that across the 12 months. As you can see, easily done, it spread the cost for me. Again, there's no actuals at the moment because I haven't got any data in just yet, but if we did have actual figures posted to that department, then that would start to come through in the actual section and our variance would start to reflect that. Again, we've got the opportunity to add a forecast for next year. So if we are looking at our budgets now and trying to look ahead, setting a forecast for next year that will copy across when we run year end, then we can enter figures down here. Now, again, if you've got a lot of departments, there might be some work involved 
trying to get all of those um, budgets in, but you will be able to report on each department afterwards and do a departmental profit and loss with advanced budget and variance on there. Great question come through there, and I am just going to cover it because it's a, it's a, it's a good one. It explains why today's a little bit tricky. Is can you run multiple budgets, um, budgeting systems simultaneously? Unfortunately, not. So for me, even to demonstrate this today, that's why I have to have four data sets. I could switch between them, but sometimes when you switch between data sets, it does take a little while and it does do some recalculating as well. So unfortunately, no, once you've got a, um, a budgeting method in mind, that's the one that you use for that particular data set. Different data sets obviously can have a different budget method if you're using multiple companies. OK, so that is the advanced department overview. The next one I'm going to look at tends to be the most common one that people will use if they're going to use the advanced budgeting method. So I'm just going to demonstrate that next. And that's the advanced um, departmental in-depth. So again, just back to the PowerPoint. So I'm going to um, demonstrate this for you. OK. So that's us back to the PowerPoint there. So you will notice that regardless of what um, version you're using for budgeting, each of the windows is very similar. OK, so don't be um, sort of misled by the way that window looks. If you're not sure what um, budgeting method you're using, please do check within settings and then come from preferences. So I say this is the most popular one because this tends to be the most detailed one. Now, there is going to be obviously a lot of work in putting the um, budget details initially. So bear in mind what you do put in, you'll most probably be able to get out through reporting. What this allows us to do is to create a budget per nominal code and per department. So it's almost like a merging of the previous two budgeting methods to create an overall budgeting method there. So the window is exactly the same. But I'm just going to show you those subtle differences so you can see how you would enter those value in, values in. So again, for the last time, just going to pop into a new data set. So we're an advanced departmental in-depth. Bringing that across and exactly the same. We're going to access that through the departments module on the left hand side. So within here, we're going to pop up to budgets again. And a very similar window is going to appear. But this time we've got both the nominal area with the expansion available and the department. OK, so I'm just going to do an example here. So if I, for example, want to do nominal code 4000, then I need to find it nominal code 4000. And then I also need to find the department as well. So I'm going to select my Newcastle branch. So my Newcastle branch on product sales code 4000, I want to pop on a budget. And as you can see there at the moment, I've already got a budget there of 4000 pounds sorry, 40,000, and I've asked it to spread the cost across that period. So spread that across for me nice and uniformly. If I wanted to change my figures over the summer period because I'm very seasonal and um, tends to be busier within the summer months, then I can do from here. Again, very similar. What we can also do is we can also add in a forecast for next year. We can as well on all versions of advanced um, budgeting is we can look at previous budget details. You have to have been using the budget um, system at that point. So you can go back and if figures were entered at the time, then you can go back and look at your previous years of figures as well. So that option is there depending on when you've um, entered the details in. So we're just going to have a brief look at some of the reporting now, depending on what version of the um, advanced, sorry, the budgeting methods that you're using, there's slightly different ways of reporting. So first of all, what we will do is we'll just have a quick, a quick look at standard budgeting first. So this, um, these reports are still here. I'm just going to pop into nominal codes and into reports. And this used to be a, a really common question on technical support. A lot of um, people using maybe not quite the right report and maybe not getting the right figures or the figures that they're expecting. So within um, reports within the nominal ledger, you can see that we do have a set of reports under nominal budgets. 
The key part to sort of note here is I am in, in my advanced company. But at the top, it does say that these reports are to be used when standard budgeting method is in use. So just bear that in mind that these will only work unless specified in the description when you're using the standard budgeting system. I think there is one somewhere that does say advanced budgeting, but most of them are just for standard budgeting. So if you're on standard budgeting and you want something like a profit and loss with the actual budget and prior year figures, then you've got some options down here. If you hover over, using the little preview option there, because I won't generate them because I'm on the, the wrong system, you can start to see an idea of what those reports may look like. Also got things like your profit and loss um, per quarter. So you do have different formats of profit and loss. And so another really common question we have through to our reporting teams are variations on those management reports. So there are different reports available for you if you're using the standard system within here. Now, if you're using advanced budgets, just pop back into departments, then your reports are located elsewhere. So what you can see at the top, we've got things like a departmental profit and loss. We've got an advanced profit and loss, but we also do have the reports section here as well. So within reports, again, I've not got any um, favorites added at the moment, but we do have advanced budgets within here. And in here, this is where you can run things like your profit and loss by department, including your budget and your variance as well. So again, if you hover over, little preview here you can start to build up what that report looks like and with these reports you can select which departments that you wish to run that for as well so just remember if you're using advanced budgets the reports for you to use are all going to be located within the departments module if you're using standard budgets then your reports are going to be held for you within the nominal window OK, so we're just going to pop back to the PowerPoint. There we go. So just want to point out for you as well, you may um, be asking which report should I use? So in the handout, which I will be uploading in just a few moments time, there is a link there for our um, report finder article. This report finder helps you find which report that you need within your Sage 50 account software. So do check that one out. If you're not sure which report to use, you can use that to sort of help you, guide you as to whether it's a standard report in the system, whether or not it may be a report that comes as one of our report libraries uh, and it does give you options um, in terms of um, where to download those if they're using the report libraries. Okay so running slightly ahead of schedule because it is a smaller topic um, for today and we are going to be looking at making these um, slightly shorter going forward just to make sure that they're short and snappy and everyone can fit them into their day but we're just going to very briefly talk about the upcoming webinars so next week we are going to be looking at charities so if you are a charity and you're using the feature and you want to get a little bit more out of the charities module then next week we're running a session on wednesday and then we're also running a session on clearing records so last week michael did cover off um the clear audit trail we're going to be looking at doing a clearing record session, section, which um, session, which follows on nicely from running a clear audit trail. So if you caught us on that section session, and you want to get um, the next one in that series, then do join us on Tuesday. If you haven't joined that session, then we do have a recording of the clear audit trail one available online, but you can still join us for the clearing records, regardless of whether or not you joined us on that session. We are also doing some sessions on reporting through November and December. We'll be looking at things like the report library and some of the common queries we do have coming through to our report design team as well. So if you are looking for more information on reports, then please do check out our list um, of all of our upcoming webinars over the next few months um, and get yourself signed up there. Okay, so um, I'm just going to put myself on mute for a moment while I do upload the handout for you. Keep your questions coming across there. I think you kept the team pretty bu busy there, so they're um, just answering the questions there. And I will see if there's any I can answer across to all of you there. So I'll just pop on mute for a few moments while we get that uploaded. But if you do want to leave us in the meantime, 
thank you very much for joining us. We do hope to see you next week or in the upcoming weeks on our future webinars. So if you are leaving, take care and um, we'll see you again really soon. But we will pop back before we end the session today. Okay, so just thought I would pop back because um, my handout has been uploaded for me. Thank you very much. Um, just to show you, we've got a couple of questions there about importing budgets. And I just wanted to show you where you can find the import template so that you can see um, what information you need to start filling in there. So I am going to just pop into Help and About, which is the window I'm in at the moment. And within Help and About, we just click on the program directory. The program directory then takes us to a folder called import templates. If I just double click on there and open that up, these are all of the templates that can be imported into your software. So if you are looking at importing a budget, what you need to be doing is using the nominal record um, template. Just double click on that and open this one up. Just making sure that's opening for me. There we go. OK, so this is the template. And as you can see there, you can put in the nominal reference reference that might be, say, for example, code 4000. The name of the record. And then you can pop in your monthly budgets as well. So that was just found and helping about and within help and about, it's in your program directory and it's import templates. Remember that will only work if you're using standard budgeting. So unfortunately, you can't import if you're using advanced budgeting there. OK, just quickly looking at the questions, I think they're all being answered at the moment. So just give them a few more moments to um, submit the answers there. Great question has come through there again is, um, is there a plan to enable import of budgets in the future? And I'm assuming that's for advanced budgets. Now, it isn't something that I know is coming in the next version, but it is something I would suggest if you do want to start importing advanced budgets is that you get onto Sage City. So sagecity.com, it will ask you to create a login um, if you haven't already got one. If you have already got a login for things like your MySage account, if you log in, what it will allow you to do is to access the suggestions board. Not only can you submit suggestions, you can also vote on other people's suggestions. Now, it is something that we do take into consideration. So last year we launched version 28.1 and we had over 22 um, new features added as a suggestion from our customers. So if you do have any suggestions for improvements or things you'd like to see change in the software, then please do get onto Sage City. We really do take those um, into account. So yeah, quite a few questions on there around importing. So please do get onto Sage City, vote for each other's um, submissions. And like I said, that will be something that will be taken into consideration. On obviously, I can't give any guarantees on there, but the more requests we have, the further up the list these do go. Another really great, great question that I think I've seen a couple of times, and again, I'd just like to maybe um, highlight that, is a few questions there around budgets and the link with um, projects. Now, projects is actually separate from um, all of the budgeting methods we've mentioned today. So if I just pop into my software here. Okay, so um, I've got a, a project set up here. 
think I've just typed anything in here. You do have the ability to add in um, details and budgets into a project record, as you can see here. Unfortunately, they're not linked to advanced budgeting, so they are completely separate from one another. But that's a really good question. We've had that a couple of times today. Another great suggestion um, while those questions are just being answered there is if you do want to give budgeting a go and see if it's going to work for you, ra rather than entering everything in, you could give it a go on a couple of nominal codes or a couple of departments. Remember, you do have your demonstration data and your practice data. So you can access these by going into file and open. And you've got the option for demo data. Demo data is a set of data that we've created, so it's pre-populated with bits of information. You could by all means go and try it out in there, or you can try practice data. Practice data is a clean sheet, um, but just bear in mind, no matter what, if you enter data into demo data or practice data, unfortunately, you can't then move it into your live data, but it might give you a little idea if you just try it out across a couple of nominal codes, pop in some transactions without affecting your live data, and allow you to run some of the reports and see how they work. So that's a really good option. If you do want to log into the demo data, it will ask you for a login. The login name is manager. And if you just leave the password blank, that will allow you to log in there. So just wrapping up the few last questions there. So again, just pop myself on mute while the team just finalise those for you, but we will pop back before we end the session there. Okay, so that looks as though that's all the questions answered there. Um, like we said earlier, we hope to see you on another session really soon. When you leave today, you will be prompted for some feedback. If you could send your feedback across to us, as well as any suggestions for future webinars, that is greatly appreciated today. Hopefully we'll see you next week. But in the meantime, thank you very much for joining us. Take care and we'll see you all really soon. Thanks again to the team who've supported all of the questions as well today. Thank you.